اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمد و نصلي و نسلم على رسوله الكريم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته As we all know the holy month of Ramadan is soon going to descend upon us we are extremely grateful to our Lord Allah the exalted who has once again given us this blessed month he has blessed us with this blessed month in which his mercy his forgiveness and blessings descend upon us in the holy month of Ramadan the gates of heaven and mercy are opened up to the believers Allah the exalted commands the watchman of heavens that is angel does anyone know his name well his name is angel Rizwan to decorate the heavens throughout the year and when the first day of Ramadan comes there is a wind which blows originating from the leaves of the he- leaves of the trees of the heavens subhanallah subhanallah, subhanallah. say louder subhanallah. okay so in this class if you like anything or if you find anything which is very interesting i want all of you kids to say subhanallah once more subhanallah okay all right so moving on so as i was saying to decorate the heavens throughout the year and when the first day of ramadan comes there is a wind which blows originating from the leaves of the heaven trees and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands the watchman of hell his name is angel malik alayhi salam to close the gates of hell and to chain up all the shayateen now can any one of you tell me how many gates of the heavens are there no it's actually eight gates and can any one of you tell me how many levels of the hell are there anyone okay well i'll tell you there are seven levels so there are how many gates eight, eight gates and there are how many levels of the heavens seven. of the hell sorry seven seven, seven levels so there are eight gates of the heaven heavens and one of the gate is called rayyan from which those believers who observe fast will enter the jannah subhanallah so the holy month of ramadan is divided into three parts and each part consists of 10 days which is called an ashra the first ashra is of Can anyone tell me what is the first ashra of? The first ashra is of mercy. Repeat after me. The first ashra is of mercy, which is called rahma. The second ashra is of forgiveness, which is called maghfirat. What is the second ashra of? Forgiveness. Forgiveness, which is maghfirat. And the third ashra is of freedom from hell, that is jann- uh, jahannam se pana. What is the third ashra for? Freedom from hell. Freedom from hell. So the holy month of Ramadan is divided into three parts. Each part consists of 10 days which is called an ashra. First ashra is of mercy. second forgiveness. Third uh, freedom from hell. Okay? And my dear children, remember one thing. After this after this class is conducted, there will be a question and answer session in which all of these questions will be asked to you and you will be and you are supposed to answer them so all of you please pay attention so now can any one of you tell me the five pillars of islam anyone the five pillars of islam it is a very easy question can anyone tell me the five pillars of islam yes shahada sala zakat sawm and hajj that there are four shahada right exactly so i'll repeat it again there are five pillars in islam okay the first pillar is shahada second pillar is namaz third is saum that is roza sorry third is zaka fourth is saum and fifth is hajj now for all of you who have who are not 
um, familiar with the five pillars of Islam, there is an easy way to memorize it. First, as I told, is Shahada. Now, uh, when does a person become a Muslim? When he recites the Kalima, that is Shahada. Second, after you're a Muslim, what is your very basic obligatory duty? Namaz. Namaz, that is Salah. So second pillar is Salah. Then the third pillar is Zakah, which is another important element. Zakah means purifying dues, which are paid throughout the year, which a Muslim pays throughout the year. But if you paid in the month of Ramadan, you get more sawab. Then the fourth pillar is Roza, that is Psalm, that is fast, to fast. And then the fifth, last but not the least, is exactly Hajj. Now Hajj is a fard on every Muslim. Every Muslim, it is a fard on every Muslim to f perform Hajj at least once in his lifetime if he has the bare necessities to perform it. Suppose if you are a poor person, okay, and you do not have that much money to go and perform Hajj, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will excuse you because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala understands you. But if you have the enough necessities to perform Hajj, the money to perform Hajj, then you should do it. Otherwise, it is a big guna for you. So these were the five pillars of Islam. So, um, now, since we're talking about Ramadan, we'll take the most obvious pillar, which is the fourth pillar, that is Psalm, which is Rosa. Repeat after me, which is the fourth pillar? Psalm. Exactly. So, Psalm, which means Rosa or to fast, is the fourth pillar of Islam, like I said. There is a hadith saying, the fishes in the ocean pray for those believers who fast till the time of iftar, and the angels Pray for the forgiveness of the fasting men every day and night. Subhanallah. Isn't that a great thing? So, this is the hadith. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, The smell, the bad smell that comes from the mouth of a believer who fast is more pleasant to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than the smell of mushk, than the fragrance of mushk. Now, my dear friends, you know what's mushk? Mushk is a beautiful fragrance which comes from the deer, from the part of a deer's body. You know what's a deer, right? It's an animal. So that mushk part comes from the, comes from the internal part of a deer. And it is so, it, it has such an amazing fragrance. So what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying here is that the smell that comes from the mouth of a believer who fasts is more pleasant to him than the smell of, than the beautiful smell of mushk. Subhanallah. So now that all of you know about the month of Ramadan and about Rosa, I will tell you the method of fasting. So um, what is Sahari? Or in other words, what is Suhoor? Can anybody tell me what is Sahari or what is Suhoor? Now see, children, be free, okay? Tell me whatever you, no matter if it is right or not, just tell me whatever you know about Sahari. Is there anyone who, who knows anything about Sahari? I'm sure it is a very common practice because it happens in each of our houses. So is there anyone? Yes, okay. Exactly. It is correct. See, he's saying khake roza rakhna. So Sahari, my dear child, I will tell you, it means the pre-dawn meal we eat before we fast. Now the timing for Rosa is from dawn, which is when the first rays of the sun hit the sky, hit the skyline, that is dawn, okay? So the timing of Rosa is from dawn to dusk. Dusk is when the, when the sun sets in the west, that is the Maghrib Azan time. So this is the time for Rosa. So just like the, uh, just like the child said, that Sehri is the pre-dawn meal we eat before we begin our fast. And do you, do you think it is Fard? Yes or no? Do you think it is Fard? Yes. Does anyone think it, it is not Fard? Okay. Well, Sahari is not Fard. It is the Sunnah of our Holy Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. 
And whenever I say the name of our Holy Prophet, I want all of you to say the? Say the Duru Sharif. Say with me. Sallallahu alayka ya Muhammad. Sallallahu alayka ya Muhammad. Okay. So, um, so it is the sunnah of our Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And what is sunnah? Sunnah is something what our Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, what he did, and what he approved of. So as I said, Sahri is the sunnah of our Holy Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And there is one teeny tiny thing which we should always, always, always remember. Is that uh, when we're doing Sahri, we should stop doing Sahri as soon as the Fajr, as, as soon as the Fajr Azan begins. Because as soon as the Fajr Azan starts, our Rosa starts with it as well. And if we are eating at that time, then our Rosa will break. So, in fact, what we should do is we should stop doing Sahari at a point where you have sufficient time to clean and wash your mouth with water so that when the, time, when the uh, Fajr Azan takes place, your mouth is dry. So, after doing the Sahari, we come to the next part that is the Niyya, which means intention. Now, the place for Niyya is the heart. But... If we're saying it from the tongue, then it is a very good habit. We shall learn the dua for making the niya of a rosa towards the end of the class. So after doing the sahari and after doing the niya, we have entered a stage in which we can begin fasting. So can any one of you tell me any at least one act which is disliked by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or which is disliked by the sharia during fasting? At least one act. It is a very easy question. I want all of you to participate. So tell me at least one act which is disliked by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at the time of fasting. Yes? Eating. Eating. Okay. Then anything else? Yes? Drinking. Drinking. Okay. Then anyone else? Yes, Talib? Not praying namaz, that's also right. But that is not only in fasting. It's like whenever you don't pray namaz, that is not just concerned with fasting. See, if you don't pray namaz, be it any month, Ramadan, Rajab, Muharram, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not like it. Okay? We should always pray month, oh, sorry, always pray namaz or in all the months. Okay? So, um, I will tell you the acts which is disliked by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala during fasting. These are called the makru acts. These acts do not break your fast, but it is disliked by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The first is tasting food or substances that have taste. For example, while cooking. Now I'm sure all of you don't cook. None of you in fact cook. But this is concerned with your mothers. Suppose your mother is Suppose your father goes to work and he comes home for iftari. He's very tired and he needs good food. And your mother is also fasting. So how will she know that the taste of the food is good or not? In that case, in that case only, she, has, she is permitted to taste the food. Okay? Understood? It means, suppose if your dad has gone out, is going to come home for iftari and your mom is preparing the iftari, then your mom, ha your Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us the permission, I mean not us, the, mo the mother, the permission to taste the food but in a very small quantity, in a very small quantity to taste the food, to check the salt or anything. That is, but she cannot swallow it, exactly. She has to taste it and she has to spit it out. Okay? And then the second, uh, second condition is while you're using a toothpaste. Now, this is not for you but this is for your parents. Suppose your father has to go for a meeting, okay, and he has a bad smell. What is he, going, what is he supposed to do then? In that, in that situation, he is allowed to brush using the toothpaste, okay? So this is the first condition. This is the first act which is disliked by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, okay? Now, the second act, is chew or spit anything. You cannot take a food item, chew it and spit it out. It, is, it won't break your fast, but it is a wrong act. 
And why do you want to do something which is disliked by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Am I right? Yes. yes. Am I right? Yes. Exactly. So, yeah, that is the second condition. And then the third condition is chew or soften a food item for a baby. Babies don't have teeth. We all know that. So they cannot eat food items. So if you, if you take a food particle and chew and soften it and feed it to the baby, it is fine. But it should be done at least under, sorry, it should be done in extreme conditions. If the baby can wait till the time of iftari, then it is better for it. Okay? So these were the conditions, these were the acts which are disliked by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or disliked by the sharia at the time of, at the time of uh, fasting. Now that is clear, so we shall move on with the acts which, which can break your fast. Can any one of you tell me at least one act or more than that which breaks your fast? Anyone? Yes, Suhana? Anyone, can any one of you tell me at least one act which will break your fast? This is very bad. You don't, none of you kids fast? You do, right? Yeah, so you don't know which acts break the fast and which don't? Eating. Eating, correct. Okay, then? Drinking. Drinking, correct. Then? <laughs> then? <laughs> okay, abusing, fine. Stealing, okay. These all are actually, these things don't break the fast. Okay, only eating and drink. I will tell you. So the following acts break the fast. Okay, first is drinking and eating. Ex rightly said by the little girl. Second is smoking, which I'm pretty sure none of you do, but second act is smoking. Then third act is swallowing even a small piece of food particle that is stuck between your teeth. Now at times when you eat food, the food particles usually get stuck in your teeth, right? Well at the time, of, well, at the time when you're fasting, if you swallow any of these food particles, your rosa will break. So you should be very careful about it. So the first one was eating and drinking, second one was smoking, third one was swallowing a food particle that was stuck between your teeth, fourth one is oil or medication entering through your eyes or ears. Now, at now you all must be familiar with eye drops and ear drops, right? So these should be avoided at the time of fasting. And then the fourth condition is water, even a small amount of water entering down your throat through your mouth or nose. For example, when you're performing wudu, okay, you should be very careful whether the water is flowing down your throat, if the water is flowing down your throat through your mouth or nose. You should be very careful that you avoid the situation. Okay? You should be very careful while uh, rinsing your mouth and while cleaning your nose. So this is the fourth condition. Then the si uh, sorry, this is the fifth condition. Then the sixth condition is swallowing someone else's saliva, or Swallowing one's own, or uh, sorry, the sixth condition is swallowing someone else's saliva or removing your saliva from your mouth and then putting it back and then swallowing it back inside. Now at times, I mean, I'm not sure whether you do it or kids your age and smaller than your age, I hope you don't do this. They, when they're fasting, what they do, if they're very thirsty, they shall remove their saliva, okay? They remove it out of their mouth and then they put it back inside. Saliva, which it means spit, thuk. Okay? So this act will definitely break your fast. So will you do it? No. That's a very dull no. It means you will do it. Will you do it? No. Exactly. Okay. Please answer this way so that I know you're listening to me. Are you understanding whatever I'm saying? Yes. Okay. So how many points have I finished till now? Six. Right. Then the seventh one is swallowing one's own vomit or throwing up. Now, there are conditions in this also. If the vomit is mouthful, okay, 
then and if the if suppose you have purposely intended to vomit like at times what kids do is that okay they know okay vomiting breaks your fast so they will purposely vomit so that they can break their fast and go eat some chocolate or whatever they want so if we're purposely intending to vomit and your your fast will break if you're purposely vomiting then your fast will their fast will break no matter any part of it any part of your vomit is swallowed or not swallowed down your throat it does not matter your fast breaks however if you have unintentionally or unwillingly vomited and if a pea sized you pea sized is like a tiny size of the uh, vomit is swallowed that also breaks your fast okay so this was the seventh point then the eighth point the last point is putting a colored thread in your mouth which changes the color of your saliva and then you swallow that saliva okay did that make sense no okay fine suppose you you've seen colored thread right colored threads right yeah. if you put those in your mouth they change the color of your saliva okay and if you and if you swallow that saliva that breaks your fast okay so these are the eight conditions which break your fast so can you repeat all of you will have a review of them once quickly first is eating and drinking okay then second is swallow a uh, smoking exactly right then third is swallowing a small piece of food particle that was stuck between your teeth then fourth uh a small amount of water entering down your throat through your mouth or nose that also will break your fast okay then the fifth point is oil or medication entering through the eyes or ears for example ear drops and eye drops okay then sixth is swallowing someone else's saliva or removing your own saliva out of your mouth and then swallowing it back in okay that is the sixth condition then the seventh one is swallowing one's own vomit okay and i told you the conditions if the vomit is done purposely then your fast will break no matter how much amount of it is swallowed or not and if the vomit is done unintentionally or by accident or whatever then and if a pea sized part of that vomit is swallowed then also the fast will break okay and then the last one eighth is that putting a colored thread in your mouth which ch changes the color of the saliva and then you swallow that saliva this will definitely break your rosa so are you done with this yes. okay so now we shall move ahead but before we move ahead one important point is that you should be very careful while you're taking a shower all of you take a shower right yes. every day right so in the, in the month of ramadan you should be very careful when you're taking a shower or when you're performing the ritual uh, the ritual ablution that is wudu you should be very careful that the water does not enter your mouth through your you should not enter your mouth down your throat through anywhere as in from your mouth or your nose and if any of these acts is broken sorry if any of these acts is done unintentionally or by mistake and if the person realizes his mistake and does the astaghfar for it immediately then his fast is not broken and he can continue to keep the fast but if he realizes his mistake and he continues to do it then his fast is broken and he should compensate it by keeping another fast okay so now we shall move ahead with the acts which do break your fast now can any one of you tell me at least one act which do not break your fast sorry we shall move ahead with the acts which do not break your fast so can you tell me at least one act which does not break your fast anyone any one act which does not break the fast okay then anyone No, I mean obviously the good deeds will never break your act, uh, break your fast. Uh, I'm telling you the ones which are not much obvious. Okay, I will tell them. 
Um, so the acts which do not break your fast are first, a swallowing of fly or flies or smoke or dust. Now at times uh, it happens that you're playing in the playground then a fly comes and you know you're just opening your mouth and it just pops in your mouth. So in these situations your fast is not broken. Okay, this is the first situation. Then swallowing one's own phlegm, that is the dirt from the nose. Okay, then third is applying oil in the hair. Now at times people have that confusion that if you apply oil in your hair, does your fast break or not? Well, it doesn't. So applying oil in the hair is fine. Your fast remains perfect. Then fourth is applying surma in the eyes. Does all of you know what, is, what surma is? Right. It is also the sunnah of our holy prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Now remember what I told you? Whenever I said the name of our holy prophet, what were you supposed to do? Sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So say it with me together. Sallallahu alayka ya Muhammad. Say it together. Sallallahu alayka ya Muhammad. Okay. Good. So then uh, the first is accidentally swallowing a fly or flies or smoke or dust. Second is swallowing one's own nose dirt. Third is applying oil in the hair. Fourth is applying surma in the eyes. Fifth is applying powdering medicines, powdery medicines, okay? Cutting onions or chilies or sieving, yani cleaning wheat. Any taste felt due to these acts does not break your fast, okay? And then the sixth is swallowing the wetness of your mouth after rinsing it. After you rinse your mouth, you feel a little bit of wetness inside it, right? If you swallow that wetness, your fast does not break. But we should make our best attempts to try and keep our mouth dry. Then the seventh one is water entering through the ears. That does not break your fast. And then the eighth one as backbiting, yani chigli karna. That will not break your fast, but it is very much disliked by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it is also disliked by the Sharia. So why do it, right? Right? Yes. Okay. So, and the ninth one is vomiting. But here, the condition for vomiting is slightly different. Here, if the vomit is not mouthful, if it is a little less than mouthful, as in if it is not mouthful, if it, if it is just a little bit, then it's fine. That will not break your fast unless you, you're not supposed to swallow it. Okay? So, now these were the acts which do not break your fast. Let's quickly go through them once. First is accidentally swallowing a fly or fly, smoke or dust. Okay? Say yes or no. Yes. yes. Then second, is swallowing one's own nose dirt yes. okay then third is applying oil in the hair yes. okay then fourth is applying surma in the eyes yes. okay fifth is applying powdery medicines cutting onions or chilies sieving yani cleaning wheat or any or any taste felt due to these acts does not break your fast yes. okay then sixth is swallowing the wetness remaining after rinsing your mouth Right? But what should be our sincere attempts? To keep our mouth always dry. Right? Yes. Okay. Then seventh is water entering through the ears. Okay? Yes. And then eighth is backbiting, yani chugli karna, which is very much, very much, very much disliked by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And ninth is vomiting, but here the condition is different. Here if the vomit is not mouthful, and if you're not swallowing it, then that does not break your fast. Okay? So, now, sometimes there are situations in which you are not able to fast. As in, you, ha you don't have the strength or ability to fast. Can anyone tell me any of these situations, any one such situation where you are not able to fast? Yes? Sickness, Sickness very correct then. Okay, I will tell you. So, first is when you are traveling okay second is in pregnancy okay third is serious illness when you are seriously ill you are permitted not to fast Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala excuse you from fasting or in other words these acts are these situations are those in which you have a you have a choice 
whether to fast or not. So the first situation is traveling, second is pregnancy, third is serious illness, fourth is old age when you're old, fifth is weakness that can lead to death. If you're fasting, you will feel weak and that weakness can be fatal. That is the fifth condition. Then the sixth is threatened with death for fasting. Like if you're fasting, you're, you fear that you might die of hunger or thirst. And seventh is fear of madness. Okay? So what are the seven conditions in which you are permitted not to fast? First is traveling. Second is pregnancy. Third is serious illness. Fourth is old age. Fifth is weakness that can lead to death. Then sixth is threatened with death for fasting. And seventh is fear of? Madness. Madness, right. So, as I mentioned earlier, the missed fast, that is the fast which, uh, which were broken or could not be kept due to certain conditions, should be compensated. Now, how will you compensate it? By keeping another fast. For example, one missed, for compensating one missed fast, one, a person should keep another fast. And for compensating for two missed fasts, a person should keep two fasts, two another fasts, all after the month of Ramadan. But what if you're in a situation where you are not able to fast in the near future, as in you are, you're old or you're sick, you're very sick and you can't fast in the future, you know that. So what are you supposed to do in such a situation? Do you know? You're supposed to pay an amount called kafara or fidya. Now, before I move on to kafara or fidya, I would like to ask you all, what is iftari? Does anyone know what's iftari? Okay, yes. Right, okay, then he's saying in, it's the food we eat after Maghrib namaz. Okay, then anyone else? No, it's always done after Maghrib namaz. Then? Uh, breaking the fast. Right. Okay, so all these are different words to describe uh, iftari. But in actual, iftari is the meal which we eat to end our roza, to break our fast. And this is done only after the Maghrib adhan. Okay, only after the Maghrib adhan, we can break our fast and do iftari. And my dear children, did you, do you know that the dua made at the time of iftari is never rejected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So we should all make it a habit to at least be seated five minutes before the Maghrib Azan to do our dua. Okay? Okay? So now that that is done, we shall move ahead with kafara. So what is kafara? Can anyone tell me? Kafara, Fidya, okay. So, Kafara, Fidya, suppose if a person unintentionally or unwillingly misses a fast or breaks it, then as we all know, to compensate it, he should do another fast. He should keep another fast. But what if that person is old? What if that person is sick? What if he's sick? How will he compensate? He will compensate for it by paying an amount known as kafara or fidya. Okay? Children, please remember, after this class is conducted, there will be a question and answer session in which you all will be asked these questions and you will be and you are supposed to answer them. So please pay attention, okay? Okay? Yes. Alright. So like I said. If he's unable to fast in the future, if that person is unable to fast in the future due to old age or sickness, he should pay kafara, which is uh, he should feed 30 people two meals a day. So do the math. What is the total? How many meals will he be feeding the poor people? 60 meals. Okay. So this is kafara when you unintentionally or unwillingly miss a fast. Now. If you purposely, willingly, and without just cause miss a fast, then in order to compensate for it, you are supposed to keep 60 consecutive fasts. That is 60 fasts at a stretch. And if one of these 60 fasts breaks, then you have to repeat the entire cycle from the beginning. Now suppose such a person 
is not able to fast due to old age or due to sickness, then what is he supposed to do? He is then supposed to pay kapara. But this kapara is slightly different. In this kapara, he should feed, he should either free a slave or feed 60 poor people two meals a day, which means 120 meals. Or what he can do, he, he can pay the amount equivalent to, the, to fitra. What is fitra? Fitra are the post Ramadan alms due. To calculate the exact amount of kafara or fidya, one must uh, locate their loc one must uh, go to their local Islamic scholars. So now we move ahead with fitra. Fitra, as I said, are the post Ramadan alms which has been established as a mean to compensate the bad habits of a human being. What are the bad habits of a human being? Telling lies, right? Insulting someone in front of others, backbiting, stealing, uh, eyeing, attractive, uh, eyeing attractive temptations, okay? And fifth, can anyone say? Yes? Fighting. Fighting, right, okay. Fifth is consuming substances which may or may not be legal, etc. All the bad habits. So basically fit, uh, fitra is paid to compensate all these bad habits. It's like a purifier for a believer who fasts. It, it's like a purifier for a believer who fasts. If he has done bad deeds in the holy month of Ramadan, then by paying fitra, he can purify all the bad deeds. Now, now fitra is paid is supposed to be paid for each and every member of the family it can be paid in the form of grains or money and which has a nisaf for it which is around two muds of wheat to calculate the exact amount of fitra one should go to their local islamic scholars so now that we're done with kafara and fitra Let's just uh, review all the things that we've learned till now. First, we've learned about Sahari, right? Then we've learned about Nia, okay? Okay. First, we've learned about Sahari, which is the pre-dawn meal, right? Then second, we've learned about the we've learned about the Nia, that is the intention of doing a fast, okay? Then third. We have learned about the acts which are disliked by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or which are disliked by the Sharia and those are called the Makru acts. Then fourth, we have learned about those acts which do not break your fast, which break your fast, sorry. And then we've learned about the acts which do not break your fast, okay. Then we've learned about, uh, we've learned about uh, Iftari, right, yes then kafara and fitra. Now, we shall move ahead with itiqaf. Now, can anyone tell me what is itiqaf? Yes, so can anyone tell me what is itiqaf? Anyone knows what is itiqaf? Okay. Itiqaf means to stay and do ibadah continuously. It is an act which it is a sunnah act which is performed in the last 10 days that is the third ashra and what is the third ashra of freedom from freedom from hell freedom from hell exactly so this is an act that is itiqaf is an act which is done in the third ashra of the holy month of ramadan and it is such a it is a very recommended sunnah for men to perform itiqaf in a mosque and for women to perform itiqaf at home. Now, we should be careful about one thing, that itiqaf should be performed in a mosque by men, in a mosque where congregational prayers, that is, jamaat prayers are held. So, do you know what a person who performs itiqaf is called? A muttaqif. Okay? So, basically, the condition of itiqaf Itiqaf means to devote oneself completely towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and read the Holy Quran abundantly, recite durood and salam on our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and to do any religious act. 
one should not engage in worldly actions and should only get and should only get up from his place of itikaf to relieve himself as in to go to the washroom and before as i said before whenever i say the name of our holy prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam i want you all to say the duru sharif so say with me sallallahu alayka ya muhammad say it together sallallahu alayka ya okay so all of you are with me yes, yes? okay So now all of you must be familiar with the tarawih prayers, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so any one of you can tell me what the tarawih prayers are. All our new children who've just come, can any one of you tell me what is tarawih? What is tarawih and when do we pray tarawih? Anyone? Anyone from the from the old kids who want to say what is tarawih? Okay. So the Arabic word taraviya which is uh, means pause for break. Okay? What does taraviya mean? Pause for break. Pause for break. Or you can say pause for a rest. This prayer is performed at some time after the Isha prayers in which month? Ramadan. In Ramadan, right? So the tarawih prayers are performed at a time at some point after the isha namaz okay and these are performed in the um, these prayers consist of 20 cycles and if you go to the mosque for praying tarawih prayers you must have noticed that after every four cycles they pause for a break thus that's how it got its name so the tarawih prayers what do you what do you all think is it fard or sunnah Right, absolutely right. The Rabi prayers are sunnah. They are not for. They are the sunnah of our holy prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And one more thing, it is better for men to pray the Tarawi at mosque in jamaat, that is in congregation. So as the third ashra draws draws near, there is one night which is very special. a night which all of us await can anyone of you tell me what is the name of that night yes exactly mashallah that is the night of, that is laylatul qadr that is the night of power so what is this laylatul qadr can anyone tell me the importance the significance of laylatul qadr well laylatul qadr which means the night of power is the night in which the sawab for doing ibadah is equal to a th- the sawab of doing ibadah for a thousand months but this night the date of this night is not known to any one of us it's only known to allah subhanahu wa taala so what we do we as muslims we as believers who fast we when the third ashra comes we search for this night by what by praying by praying more and more by praying more namaz that is called the qiyam al lail by praying such namaz by praying such prayers so that we can uh, get the benefits of this night and the sawab of praying in this night is equal to the sawab of praying for a thousand months always remember for a thousand months exactly so it falls in the third ashra and scholars say that it is most likely to come on the 27th of ramadan okay so now we move on to another element of ramadan that is zakah so uh, which pillar of Islam, what pillar of islam is zakah which pillar of islam is zakah can anyone tell me third. yes third okay third exactly so zakah is the third pillar of islam now what does zakah mean As I said before, zakah means purifying dues. Now, a Muslim, a believer, can pay zakah throughout the year, but if he pays it in the month of Ramadan, then the sawab, then he will get more sawab. Subhanallah. So, now for the last and final element of the month of Ramadan, that is dua, which means prayer, to ask, to ask whom. to ask allah subhanahu wa taala it is it is another important element of the month of ramadan 
<laughs> In this blessed month, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descends upon the first sky and asks, Is there anyone who seeks my, who, who seeks my mercy and forgiveness? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descends on the first sky and asks his believers who fast, Is there anyone among you who seeks my, who seeks my mercy and forgiveness? Subhanallah. Isn't that a big thing? Yes, so... And I would, uh, my dear children, always remember that the dua made by a, belie by a believer who fasts is always accepted by Allah. But the dua made at the time of iftari is never, ever, ever rejected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But we waste such precious moments. Our mothers, most of our mothers, are busy in preparing dishes for us at the time of iftari. They're busy in t preparing the dishes, they're busy in laying out the table and everything that they miss. They are not able to reap the benefits of this blessed moment. And we kids, the small kids and even kids of my age, we are so busy eyeing those mouth-watering dishes that we're just waiting, we're desperately waiting for the Maghrib Azan so that we can go and have a taste of all of them. Well, this is wrong, my dears. What we should do is we should make it a habit that at least five minutes or ten minutes or any time before the Maghrib Namaz, make it a habit to sit and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala each and everything that you need, that you require in your life. Because the dua made at the time of iftari is never ever rejected by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay? So, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept all our prayers and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us ready for the holy month of Ramadan. Jazakallah khair. So, uh, now I would like to request Brother Talib to please come over here and do the Tilawat of the Holy Quran. Brother Talib. A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitanir Rajeem Bismillahirrahmanir Rahim Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahmanir Rahim مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا السراط المستقيم سراط الذين عنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين يا أيها الذين آمنوا كتب عليكم الصيام كما كتب على الذين من قبلكم من قبلكم لعلكم تتقون إيه إيمان والم إيه إيمان والم تم بروز استر فرس كيا جاي جس تر تم سے پہلے لوگوں پر تاکہ تم متقی بنو شهر رمضان الذي أنزل مه فيه القرآن هدى للناس وبينات من الهدى هدى والفرقان فمن شاهد منكم منكم الشهر فليسم فليسمه ومن كان مريضا أو على أو على سفر فإدة فإدة من آيات من أيام أخر أخرى يريد الله بكم يريد الله بكم الأسرة ولا يريد بكم الأسرة ولقد ولقد ملوا ملوا الإذن ولقد ولتقد ملوا إدة ولتكبر ولتكبر الله على ما ما ي ما هدق هدقم 
هداكم ولا هداكم ولا لكم تستقون تشكرون رمضان كم رمضان كم مهينة جسم القرآن أترى لوجو كليم هداية ورهنماي ورفسلي كي روشن باتي تتم جو كوي يه يه مهينة مهينة باي ضرور اس كي روزي ركيم اور جو بیمار یا سفر میں ہو تو اتنے روزے اور دنوں میں اللہ سبحانہ تعالی تم پر آسانی چاہتا ہے اور تم پر دشواری نہیں چاہتا اور اس, اور اس لئے تم گنتی پوری کرو اور اللہ عزوجال کی بڑائی بولو اس پر کہ اس نے تمہیں ہدایت کی کہیں تم حق گزار ہو Jazak Allah khair. Um, khair, Brother Talib. Now I would like to invite any of my little, uh, little brothers and sisters. Anyone of you would be interested in coming up here and uh, re reciting for us this poem on Ramadan? Anyone of you? Yes, Rida? Ramadan is here. The month is here. Please take cheer. Ramadan, Ramadan, Ramadan is here. It's time to fast and give zakat. Worship Allah and make dua. All the devils are changed these days. Build your faith and better your ways. Subhanallah. 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 MashaAllah. Jazakallah khair, Sister Rida. Now I would like to invite any one of you who would be interested in coming here and reciting for us a naat or a hamd or anything related to Ramadan. Sallallahu alayka ya ya habib Allah wa sallam alayka ya ya habib Allah मैं तो आशिक हूँ नबी का 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 विक्र सरवर में मुझे कोया हुआ रहने दो मुझे बस याद मोहम्मद में फना रहने दो विक्र सरवर में मुझे कोया हुआ रहने दो मुझे बस याद मोहम्मद में फना रहने दो मैं तो आशिक हूँ नबी का मैं तो शिक हूँ नबी का मैं तो आशिक 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 हूँ नबी का दिल में नबी की याद ने डेरा जमा लिया सारे गमों से आप के गम ने बचा लिया कुर्बान जाऊँ या नबी तेरे मुकाम पर कुर्बान जाऊँ या नबी तेरे मुकाम पर तूने तो पत्थरों को भी कलमा पड़ा दिया वीरानियाँ न आएंगी आँखों में अब कभी खाके जरे रसूल कसुरमा लगा लिया वीरानियाँ न आएंगी आँखों में अब कभी खाके जरे रसूल कसुरमा लगा लिया सीने में बहार कमेला लगा हुआ सीने में बहार कमेला लगा हुआ जब से तुम्हारे दर्द को महमा बना लिया मैं तो आशिक हूँ नबी का 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 जजाकल्लाह खैर ब्रदर हसन now, I would like to request any one of you, anyone else who would be willing to come and recite us, recite for us a hamd or a naat or anything. Sallallahu alayka ya 
Brother Mudassir. Now I would like to uh, request any one of you who would like to come on and say another hamd or not. Okay, so now that we've had beautiful presenters of not, mashallah, we shall move ahead. We shall move ahead with our activity session. So the activity session for the kids of seven years and below should uh, shall be done upstairs and I would like to request brother Alim and brother Inshal to please start taking the kids who are seven years and under to the activity session. Okay, before you move on to your activity session, um, we have here five duas for Ramadan. These five duas are very essential during the month of Ramadan. So I would like to request all of you to please repeat after me. Now wait one. Asuma Asuma Haddal. 
يوم لله تعالى من فرد رمضان this one this dua is for fasting as in the new the niya like i said for keeping the fast so once more we shall repeat now wait to one asuma had the yoma had the yoma lillahi ta'ala min faradi ramadan Next, we have the dua for iftari, which I'm sure all of you must be familiar with. So, we shall re we shall repeat after uh, you shall repeat after me. <coughs> Allahumma inni laka sumtu, wa bik wa bika amantu, wa ilayka tawakkaltu, wa la rizqika aftartu. Once again, Allahumma inni laka asumtu wa bika amantu wa alayka tawakkaltu wa ala rizqika aftartu. Yes. Um, most of the time, what we do is we recite this dua and then we do, then we break our fast. Actually, if you look at its translation, it says, O oh Allah, verily for you I fasted, in you I believed, and upon you I trusted, and upon your provision I broke my fast. So, this dua should be recited after you break your fast. Okay? Do Bismillah break the fast and then recite Do, yes, you're supposed to do the Bismillah, then you say this, then you break your fast, and then you're supposed to recite this dua. Next is the dua for Tarawi prayers. So please repeat after me. Subhana dhil mulki wal malakuti Subhana dhil izzati wal adhmati wal haybati wal qudrati wal kibriya'i والجبروت سبحان الملك حي الذي لا ينام ولا يموت سبوه قدوس ربنا قدوس ربنا ملائكتي والروح Allahumma ajirna minan nar. Once again. Sorry. Ya mujiru, ya mujiru, ya mujiru. So once again we shall repeat this dua. Subhana dhil mulki wal malakuti. Subhana dhil mulki wal malakuti. Subhana dhil izzati wal azmati. Wal haybati wal qudrati. Wal kibriya'i wal jabarut. سبحان الم سبحان الملك الحي الذي حي الذي لا ينام ولا يموت سبوه قدوس ربنا ورب الملائكة والروح اللهم أجرنا من النار Ya Mujiru, Ya Mujiru, Ya Mujiru. Yes, as we all know that there are 20 cycles of Raka, 20 cycles in the Taravi prayers. And after each, after each two cycles, that is after 
each four rakat, you are supposed to say this dua. Then next we have the dua for the first 10 days of Ramadan. That is the first ashra, which is the ashra of mercy. So repeat after me. Allahumma ghfir wa raham wa anta khayru rahimi. Allahumma maghfir wa raham wa anta khayru rahimi. The next dua is for the middle 10 days of Ramadan. That is the second ashra of Ramadan, which is the ashra for forgiveness. Ashra of forgiveness of maghfirat. So repeat after me. Astaghfirullah Rabbi min kulli. So now we have the dua for the last 10 days of Ramadan, which is the third ashra, which is freedom from hell. Allahumma innaka afuun. Tuhibbu al afwa. Fafuani ya kareem. So the first question is what are the five pillars of Islam? So come on all of you start telling me what are the five pillars of Islam? What's the first pillar? What's the first pillar? Shahada. So all of you write Shahada. And now write it in such a way that you have placed like write first like this and then the second one like that and third like that and so on. Shahada. This is how you spell Shahada. Is it visible to all of you? Okay. Then the second pillar is Namaz. Okay. Then the third? Third is? What do you pay throughout the year? You pay Rosa throughout the year? Zakat. Exactly. Third is Zakat. Then fourth is? Psalm. That is Rosa, which means to fast. And fifth is? What's the fifth one? Hajj. Exactly. So write all the five. Zakat is your Hassan. Uh, I rose ready. Psalm is like this. S A U M. Okay, so all of your answers are ready? Done? Yes. Okay, so now the next question. Name the angels out of which one is appointed as the watchman of heavens and the other is appointed as the watchman of hell. Who is appointed as the watchman of the heavens? Angel Rizwan. Angel Rizwan, exactly. And this, and who is the watchman of hell? Ma Angel Malik. Angel Malik, okay. Okay, then the third question. How many gates of the heavens are there and how many levels of the hell are there? Eight, eight, eight gates and seven levels. Eight okay, very good, fine. So this was the one which you were really paying attention. Okay. Allah Ta'ala Muje Namazi Panade. Amin. I want to say 
want all of you to say Ami. Allah meri ammi ko sehat tandurusti de. मेरी सेहत अच्छी रखे मेरे मेरे पेरेंट्स की सेहत अच्छी रखे मेरे पेरेंट्स की सेहत अच्छी रखे आमी सर मैं चलूँ ही चलूँ शुभकाम रहा मैं सर आमी माशा अल्लाह ये पर्ची पहले बोलती नहीं थी ये जिक्र की मैसेज की बरकत है माशा अल्लाह दुआ करने लगा था हमारे नबी मोहम्मद सल्लल्लाहु अलैहि वसल्लम के वसीले से हम सब को कलमे वाली मौत अता फरमा हमारे गुनाहों को माफ फरमा दे मेरे स्कूल में फसला है अल्लाह ताला मैं भी स्कूल में फसता हूँ ये भी स्कूल में फसता है Allah give me knowledge. Amen. My mom's health was good. My mom's health was good. Amen. 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 हम सब को नेक बना हमारी सारी जाहरी और बातनी परेशानी को दूर फरमा اللہ تعالیٰ ہم سب کو انہیں ایک کام کرنے کی دفعی کتاب فرمائے اللہ تعالیٰ ہماری گلتی کو معاف فرمائے اللہ تعالیٰ ہماری گلتی کو معاف فرمائے اللہ ہمارے گھر کی ٹینشنز کو ختم کر دیں Okay, uh, now I would like to request Brother Talib to please come over here and he will do the rest of the dua. I want my full family uh, to have long life. استغفر الله ربي من كل ذنب وعتوب إليه يا الله هماري ديني و دنياوي امكو مالا مال کر يا الله همي اور هماري ما باب يا الله همي اور هماري ما باب اور تمام امت محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم کو کی چھوٹی بڑی چھوٹی بڑی بیماریوں سے اور پریشانی اور مصیبتوں سے مصیبتوں سے نجات دلا یا اللہ ہمیں یا اللہ ہمارے ماں باپ اور ہمیں یا اللہ ہمارے ماں باپ پر اور ہم پر اپنا کرم خاص اتار فرما یا اللہ ہمیں مرتے وقت کلمہ نصیب فرما یا اللہ ہمیں ساری ظاہری باطنی پریشانی کو دور فرما یا اللہ قیامت کی دن ہمارے سر پر عرش کا سایہ نصیب ہو یا اللہ نبی پاک کے ہاتھوں میں آب کوسر کا پانی پینا نصیب ہو پل سرات پر ثابت قدم رکھ آمین 
محمد صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم کے وسیلے سے ہمائی ساری ہمائی ساری دعاوں کو قبول فرما قبول فرما قبول فرما قبول فرما آمین سمامین برحمتکہ یا رحمہ الرحمین